Hi there, and let's have a little look at what we can see in the night sky in May. Now, of course, the May sky um, is getting shorter and shorter than the nighttime sky because the sun is setting later and it's rising earlier. However, there are still a few bright constellations around. Gemini is still bright in the western sky at sunset, um, and Leo, the sign of spring, is moving from the south into the western sky as May progresses. It'll set in June. The bright stars of Arcturus and Spica dominate the western sky for the next few weeks. And you can find them by arcing left, following the curve of the handle of the Big Dipper, to Arcturus in Boates, the herdsman. We arc to Arcturus. And then we speed or spike down to Spica in Virgo below. Other constellations that are around... Well, once Virgo is high in the sky towards the end of the month, we can see Corvus the crow sitting below. It looks like a slightly squished box. Uh, and Corona Borealis, the northern crown, sitting to the left uh, of Boates the herdsman. And these are the bright um, stars that we can, bright, bright constellations that we can see in the evening sky. May is not one of the best months, but nevertheless there are some interesting things out there. Between the 4th and 5th of May, the Eta Aquilids meteor shower reaches its peak. And it's an above average shower, although mainly in the southern hemisphere, where you can see about 60 uh, meteors an hour. In the northern hemisphere, um, we get about 30. And if you want to know more about the Eta Aquilids, have a look at our video on, on that meteor shower, and it'll give you more details. On the 7th of moon, 1045 UTC, we get a full moon, yet another supermoon. In fact, it's the last of the four supermoons of 2020. The moon will be near its closest approach to the Earth at the time of the full moon, so it may look a little bit larger, uh, and it should look brighter uh, than normal. And around the 22nd of May, we have a new moon, 1739 UTC, which means the end of the month is the best time to observe the stars because the moon will not be in the sky. We were expecting Comet Atlas to be a, a dominant object, but sadly it broke up when it got close to the Sun, as you can see on these pictures taken by the Hubble telescope. So it's no longer visible. Uh, in fact, it's no longer a comet. In terms of planets in the evening sky, Mercury and Venus. Now, Venus, which has been with us since Christmas, dazzlingly bright and dominating the western sky, or the nighttime sky, throughout the winter, is coming towards the end of its time in our skies. At the beginning of the month, it sets four hours after sunset. But because days are getting longer, by the 31st of May, it will be setting 30 minutes after sunset. So it will almost have gone. It will look like a beautiful thin crescent through telescopes or binoculars. And towards the end of the month, Mercury is close to Venus, about the 21st, 22nd of May. Now, Mercury is a hard object to observe because it is always close to the sun. Please make sure the sun has completely set below the horizon before you try and look for Mercury, certainly through binoculars or telescopes, or you can do yourself a lot of damage by catching sunlight. In the morning sky, we have Mars, Jupiter and Saturn. Saturn quite dim. Jupiter, low in the sky, is much brighter. And Mars is getting brighter and growing in apparent size through telescopes, but again, still low in the morning sky, as you can see. And those are the main objects visible this year in May. So I do hope you get a chance to see some stars and uh, catch the Eta Aquilis meteor shower and also look at the planets, particularly Mercury, which is one of those objects that many astronomers have never seen, strangely. So enjoy yourselves, take care, stay safe, see you next time. <laughs>